friends um, in case we have to conclude uh, the aspect of the discussion on uh, the territory of india uh, such a discussion will not be complete by discussing the kind of territory of india that is uh, under international law uh, some kind of disputed territory as claimed by two of our neighbors uh, one is pakistan the other is china uh, interestingly and unfortunately these two uh, neighbors have never accepted india's uh, territorial sovereignty over a lot of uh, a piece of land and lot of territory that india claims as its sovereign territory and uh, while we have the challenges of uh, recognition of our territory uh, both on the eastern front as well as on the northern front uh, the northern front uh, is of particularly of uh, international importance uh, because um, we have a territory of land that has been uh, occupied by pakistan uh, and this kind of an occupation uh, is existing right from the year 1947 uh now the united nations and other international organizations call it pakistan controlled kashmir whereas we call it pakistan occupied uh, kashmir uh some uh, also say that it is pakistan administered Kash- kashmir uh but you know right now i think it's important to say that it is pakistan occupied jammu and kashmir as uh, the modi government has announced uh, and you will notice from this uh, map over here the area of occupation of uh, uh, kashmir uh, that is there with the uh, pakistan uh, some area is there with china and there is uh, a certain degree of uh, territory that was given by uh, pakistan to china it was uh, uh, ceded by china uh, uh, by pakistan to china now pakistan occupied kashmir is divided into azad jammu and kashmir and uh, uh, gilgit Uh, uh kashmir and uh, you will notice that uh, uh, these two were created for better administration of those areas and uh, uh, you see that this is the line of control uh, on both the western and the eastern front with china uh, however you will notice that uh, the history of uh, pok uh, starts from the very uh, nature of uh, you know how uh, maharaja hari singh the ruler of jammu and kashmir at that point of time uh, he wanted to keep uh, jammu and kashmir as an independent state and uh, you know while india and pakistan were getting uh, divided and there was a partition uh, between these two uh, you know kind of territories in this country uh, jammu and kashmir always thought that it should remain uh, neither it should uh, align to uh, pakistan nor neither it should align to india however unfortunately what happened is in 1947 uh, the pakistan pashtun tribals attacked jammu and kashmir so there was an invasion from the pakistani side uh, and at that point of time the uh, you know it was jammu and kashmir was a princely state uh, it was uh, uh, ruled by king hari singh and he uh, did not have any other option he did not have a military at that point of time and he then sought help from the indian governor general uh lord mount batten so you know this were the times when india was uh, almost getting its own independence uh and the governor uh, governor general mount batten was the last governor general of india and uh, uh you know uh, uh, lord mount batten actually replied and he said that uh, you know uh, he will clear uh, the jammu and kashmir soil from the invaders uh and this a uh, statement of lord batten batten very clearly uh, shows that india uh, was uh, you know recognizing jammu and kashmir as its uh, integral part it was waiting for the princely states to join main uh, land and to join the union of india and uh, the state was uh, almost ready uh, to be annexed uh, to the indian mainland so so the history as it goes that uh, the government of india uh, did uh, you know uh, give this option and uh, you know uh, and king hari singh later on uh, did sign the instrument of accession uh, and that instrument of accession was very very important uh, however 
you will notice that this instrument of accession with uh, uh, India and Lord Mountbatten, as the case may be, is the real uh, uh, seed of the Kashmir dispute. Uh, because of uh, the kind of location it is uh, there, I think both India and Pakistan uh, want to make a claim on uh, this kind of a territory. So, uh, you know, uh, the situation as we see in Pakistan uh, is quite uh, uh, problematic because they never accepted uh, the sovereignty of uh, India on this territory. And uh, this has been almost a problem for more than now 70 years between the two nations that they have been fighting over the territory of uh, Kashmir. So, uh, Kashmir uh, had to have some kind of autonomy or independence, but as of now, with the abolition of Article 317 in India, uh, we have decided that uh, uh, Kashmir will be uh, part of the Union of India. And uh, you will notice that the Britishers, uh, during their colonization, uh, did not uh, treat Kashmir as a, a different uh, territory. And from that uh, rule of, uh, you know, uh, Britain, I think we got uh, our uh, definition of uh, the Union territory in India. Um, so, I think, um, you know, a small discussion on the Pakistan occupied Kashmir uh, is quite relevant at times. Uh, however, you must know that uh, if one looks at the territory uh, in uh, Jammu and Kashmir, currently almost 50% of Jammu and Kashmir uh, has been in occupation of Pakistan. So India just has, um, you know, uh, half of the territory and half has been uh, lost, if I can use that word, or occupied uh, illegally by Pakistan. And uh, you will notice that uh, that's a major part. And uh, there is a lot of uh, activity in uh, POK. There are certain, uh, you know, re uh, resources that are available over there that which has been exploited. Uh, people mainly are in uh, agricultural activity uh, in POK. The economic and cultural situation over there is uh, uh, quite challenging uh, uh, as well. So, uh, I think uh, that is important uh, in terms of understanding. So, let's move forward and then finally look at what I would want to call as uh, the tires of uh, public administration. Uh, uh, in the territory of India, right? So, if you look at um, the territory of uh, public administration or the scope or application of the public administration, you will notice that um, first we have the union, uh, union territory and union uh, administration. Uh, below it, we have the state territory and state administration. Uh, for example, we have 28 states. Uh, it could be like the state of West Bengal, it could be the state of uh, Odisha or any other state. Then we have uh, divisions or zones or regions. Uh, for example, we have the western zone, we have the eastern zone. Uh, so some of these divisions are sometimes important uh, because they may be divisions uh, based on cultural uh, aspects or in terms of uh, governance aspects as well. Uh, interestingly, some of these divisions are also based on uh, establishment of certain tribunals. For example, we have a national green tribunal which uh, looks at uh, different zones. Uh, for example, we have a national green tribunal in the southern zone, in the western zone. Uh, so, zone-wise, uh, the country is probably divided. We have a central zone, we have a northern zone, we have a northeastern zone, then we have a western zone, and then we have a, a, a southern. And, and uh, uh, so, I think. Uh, we say there are six zones, okay, north, central, eastern, and northeastern, uh, and then western and southern, right. So, this is how probably uh, India could be divided into certain kinds of zones for better uh, public administration and better, uh, you know, uh, uh, public policy uh, purposes. Uh, below the zones, one would want to discuss about the district. Uh, and you will notice that uh, every state is subdivided into several districts. Uh, so, you will notice that a uh, uh, lot of states uh, have divided and a lot of new districts are being created because of better population uh, density and management. 
and every district has a, a district uh, level administration uh, usually uh, that's where uh, uh, um, um, indian civil service officer is deputed as the district head or the district collector as uh, uh, was the term in duty colonial times uh, fine you will notice that um, each district could have also a district magistrate and uh, in certain places you will notice that uh, like for example uh, the entire union territory of lakshadweep is considered as one district for which there is one district administration uh, so the number of districts uh, are quite interesting you know some states have as many as 26 districts uh, karnataka may have around 31 districts uh, it depends upon the population uh, uh, to the district entity Uh, a state like uttar pradesh has 75 districts uttar pradesh happens to be the largest state uh, in india uh, and maharashtra has 36 districts so this is how uh, the uh, districts can be divided uh, jammu and kashmir has 20 districts ladakh has two districts uh, puducherry has four delhi has 11 now below the districts you have sub districts or what we call as the talukas level uh, please note in many uh, states it's called taluka in certain states like Andhra Pradesh, it is called as uh, Mandal. In some places, it is called subdivision. In many uh, the Hindi uh, speaking, uh, the belt, uh, you will notice that the sub district is called the Tehsil. Uh, of course, now you have what is known as the metropolitan area, uh, which is there uh, in uh, urban uh, 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 districts, because within that urban district, there could be one city which may be declared as the metropolitan. area uh and then you can have the town council and then you can have at the village uh, panchayat or below the metropolitan area you can have a, a block or a ward so this is uh, more or less how uh, the territorial division of administration takes place uh, in india so right from the top that is from delhi uh, as the union government to the state state to division sometimes uh, it is required in terms of union administration of uh, powers and responsibilities then from state to districts from district to sub districts uh, within the districts then you look at metropolitan areas or town councils and then you look at again downwards towards uh, uh, village panchayats uh, and in the metropolitan areas you may uh, call it as the ward so i think this uh, really sums up uh, the interesting uh, aspects of governance uh, of public administration in the territory of india